It has been quiet around the person Hans Niemann for just a very few days. But now in this video, I'm going to show you that Hans is back to his great attacking style. In round four of the London Chess Classic, he's playing with the white pieces against Shreyas Royal. And that's a very interesting matchup. Hans made three draws, one and a half out of three, a little bit boring compared to the very exciting uh, performance he had in uh, Zagreb the uh, the other week. And Shreyas Royal is also on one and a half out of three. He managed to win one game against Super Grandmaster Amin Tabatabai. So that's very uh, great news for him. He is uh, the youngest international master from England. Likely he will become also the youngest Grandmaster. He's only 14 years old. And it's an interesting uh, clash. Let's have a look. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for doing that. I appreciate all your support. Now... We are going to have a look. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6. It's the Italian opening with um, actually quite a popular line within this uh, variation as um, black is going to play a very early A5. That's a modern idea. I've explained it a bit already in one of the earlier games on the channel. It prevents white from expanding on the queen side. So the bishop is safe. The bishop can even come back to A7 whenever it wants. But there are other ideas as well, as we get to see in this game. Rook e1, castling king side, both sides making uh, some luft for their king, also preventing any of uh, the minor pieces coming out to um, g4 or g5. Knight bd2, bishop e6, and white tries to make use of that uh, hole on b5 compared to other lines where the pawn goes to a6. Now, the bishop can just go there. White is not interested in trading off the bishops uh, on uh, on e6 because after doing that black will definitely get some play along the f file so bishop b5 played and now another very interesting idea by shayas royal well actually it's not his idea it has been played in hundreds of uh, games already queen b8 may have come as a surprise to uh, most of you not to hans black's plan is to put a queen on a7 knight of one queen a7 and black is threatening to take on f2. So the rook protects the pawn. And here we see Shayos Royal goes ahead here with the move a4. Grabbing more space on the queen side. Knight goes to g3 and the queen goes to a5. Very original way of developing the queen. Attacking the, the bishop. So the bishop decides now to take on c6. Bishop takes. Pawn recaptures. And here the first very interesting moment of the game because this must have been part of the home preparation of both players especially because last year Hans Niemann had the very exact position in the US uh, championships against uh, Wesley So in which uh, the move Queen C2 was played but here Hans deviates with the move Rook C2 and that's interesting I mean the differences are subtle in both cases uh, you're going to develop your pieces along the second rank. Now after rook fb8, white play this move, c4. Also remarkable idea, but at least the bishop doesn't uh, attack the pawn on a2 any longer. And there are other ideas as well. The queen goes back to b6 and white places the queen on e2. Well, in the game with Wesley So, the queen... And the rook were reversed. But here Hans has a clear idea in mind because he would like to have its queen closer to the black uh, king side. So the queen can later on possibly join an attack. King h7, useful waiting move. And white goes rook b1. This is a slow game at the moment. A lot of pieces are still on the board. Black played here, queen a7, making space for the rook on the b file. But the bishop comes in to d2. Possibly the bishop can come to, uh, to c3 also. But there are other ideas. After the move bishop to b6, white played here this move, b4. Interesting moment. So white first tries to expand on the queen side. Now after a takes b3, a takes b3, I think white's plan here could be to bring up the b-pawn and at the right moment try to play the move c5. Maybe you even prepare it with the move rook bc1 later so that you can try to trap this bishop on uh, b6 or just remove the pawn from d6 so that later on you can take on uh, e5. This is 
very interesting way of trying to make progress on that side of the board. At least it uh, made uh, Shreyas Royal decide here to play the move c5, to lock up the position on the queen side and in the center. But also now the bishop on b6 is out of play. It's no longer exerting any pressure against the white king because of that pawn on c5. And now the center is closed. It's time to switch to the other side of the board. Hans played here the move knight to h4. Interesting move as the knight is on its way to, uh, to f5. It's a nice square for the knight to put more pressure against uh, the black king. Black, of course, want to anticipate uh, these ideas by playing here the move knight to g8. This may look strange, but if ever a knight comes in to f5, you're ready to play g6 and attack the knight as the knight on g8 overprotects that pawn on h6. Well, the knight is doing his defensive duty, but now Hans has a new idea. He played the move f4. Pawn takes f4, bishop takes f4, and the f-file is open. So white has ideas to bring more pieces to that side of the board. Now it's very important that black cannot really play this move, g5. Probably both players even didn't calculate it. It's uh, black threatening to win a piece here, but after bishop takes on g5, h takes queen h5 check. If you go king g7, then it's just queen takes g5. You get a second pawn. The other pieces will come over very soon. And it's just a devastating mating attack for, uh, for white. So g5 is not a serious move for such strong players. Royal played here this move. Rook e8. The rook is coming over back to the to the center, hopefully to put pressure against the queen or so. And Hans made a strange move here. He played this move, bishop d2. I was thinking, why is he playing that move? Probably he never really wanted to calculate g7, g5 anytime soon. But why not just bring more pieces into the attack first? I felt rook f1 is much more natural. And then later on, you can still decide what you do with your bishop you can go to d2 but maybe even better is to go back to c1 so that after bringing the queen into play the other rook can just switch over via the second rank to the f-file was not played let's see what happened bishop d2 black played the move c6 so that the queen is ready to come back into defense now knight g to f5 was played and I'm not sure what Hans is doing here. He's looking for tactical opportunities against the Black King, but things are not that simple at all, especially if Black would have played here this move, Bishop d8. That's a really good move because it doesn't give White the opportunity to take the pawn on d6. If the pawn is taken, the knight on h4 is hanging. You can take the rook, but the other rook can just recapture and Black has two minor pieces against a rook black is absolutely fine a move like bishop d8 is of course never easy to find but it does put pressure against both knights because the bishops are attacking them and maybe at some point g6 can be played and then the knight on f5 maybe will have to give up the protection of that knight on h4 was not played in the game instead there followed the move d5 which perfectly fits into this uh, typical um, plan that a, an attack on the side needs to be answered with a strike in the center, but it doesn't really do much, this pawn move. Hans played here the move bishop c3, attacking this pawn on g7. Interesting idea, but maybe not the best move. There followed the move d4, attacking the bishop. The bishop went back. Now the center is closed again, and probably Hans felt very comfortable here, but the position is far from clear. But what should black do? Bring the pieces back into defense. Bishop c7 was played and now the bishop is trying to come back here. Queen f3, white is bringing the queen into the attack as well. And black says, okay, I'm going to kick out your knight. I've seen enough of you. This knight needs to move, but Hans is not going to cooperate. He keeps the knight on that square, played here to move g4. And this is a very typical Hans intuitive peace sacrifice we have seen him making similar sacrifices in other games not particularly in this uh, opening but Hans is I would not say the, the best calculator but he definitely senses that if the 
piece will be captured, the files towards the Black King will be opened. And he believes that the other pieces, the remaining pieces, they will do the job. Well, let's see what's going to happen. The knight can be taken here when uh, probably White is just going to take back with the G-pawn. Very similar to the game. But first, the move bishop d8 was played. I think makes sense to uh, keep an eye on this uh, knight as well. The knight goes back to g2 and now the knight on f5 is taken. g takes f5, g takes f5, hitting the bishop, the bishop goes away and now Hans just played another very calm move, king h1. That's very fascinating because look at black's pieces, they are standing there, black has an extra piece but what are they exactly doing? Not very clear at all. Black has a lot of moves, it's not a forcing position, there's not much to calculate uh, here in a sense that uh, there are no forcing lines, no immediate tactics. What should black do? Well, a move like bishop g5, trying to trade off this bishop on d2, I think that's the right way to proceed. Trying to trade off attacking pieces is often a good idea, but Shreyas Royal played here the move queen e7, so the queen comes into defense, but there follows rook g1. The rook is now on the open file, cutting off the puff for the king. Still various options for uh, for black, maybe a move like rook a3 could be considered. Opting for, uh, for counterplay is one idea, but there followed the move bishop c7. So the bishop is trying to help out as well, trying to guard some dark squares on this diagonal. But the queen comes into h5. And this is very serious because the queen is excellently placed together with the bishop hitting the pawn on h6 and that means that black can never get the knight back into play knight of six runs into queen takes h6 with mate to follow very soon if you try to protect that pawn one more time with your queen like queen f8 preparing knight of six there will follow bishop g5 as the pawn on h6 is pinned and black can definitely not untangle the attack is very simple for white he's not gonna calculate anything just bring pieces into the attack and that should be enough to win the game. Anyway, this didn't happen. Royal played here bishop e5 instead. He wants to cover more dark squares closer to the king. But Hans played in very similar style. He goes knight h4, opening up the g-file for the rook. Rook a7, another rook, tries to defend along the 7th rank. But now the knight goes to f3 with possibilities of eliminating a potential uh, defender so the bishop goes back to g7 and Hans brings the bishop to f4 step by step the other pieces are joining the attack and here black is for a serious um, uh, task here he needs to decide how how to defend and that's not easy in the game there followed this move bishop f8 black moved the bishop away from g7 but one other idea i want to point out is a typical move like f6 it's the move i would have expected at some point because you're trying to connect your pieces, your major pieces with the king side. But the problem is there is rook c to g2. With ideas to take on g7, if you take with the queen, you take one more time. And after that, the rook on e8 is hanging as well. If the rook goes away, then the rook comes into g6. And now the pawn on h6 is the clear target. One interesting line could be rook f7. And now it's time to strike with the bishop on h6. If you do take with a knight, it's rook takes h6. Bishop takes, now the queen comes into g6, so here again, after the rook made use of that square, now it's the time for the queen to give a check, king h8, and queen g8 is checkmate. You see that trying to defend along the 7th rank has the drawback that it weakens other uh, parts of the board, in this case, the back rank. Bishop f8 was played in the game, and it looks as if black is just in time to keep everything protected. He, he would like to play here a move like knight f6 to attack the queen and the bishop stays on the board to guard that pawn on h6. But now it's rook takes g8. First sacrifice or well actually we were a piece down so this is the second sacrifice. It's the first rook sacrifice of the game. Eliminating an important defender. King takes and the other rook comes into the attack with check. Now if the king goes to h7 it's queen g4 and it's going to be checkmate on g8 on the next move. If you play king h8, you can do the same or you can even take on h6. Now both the g and the h file are open. That's leading to checkmate next. So instead, 
Bishop g7 played by Royal. And what is black going to, sorry, what's white going to do now? I mean, black is about to play a move like f6 and connect the queen with the bishop. So, second rook sacrifice. Rook takes g7, king takes, and now the bishop takes on h6 with check. If the king goes to f6, it's queen g5 with checkmate. The knight covers the e5 square. If you go away with the king to g8, then the queen drops back to g4, king h7, and it's uh, queen g7 with checkmate. So the king had to go to the h file. Now there are various good moves. One very nice idea here is knight g5 check. And if the king goes to, uh, to g8, it's bishop g7 threatening checkmate with a queen on h8. If you do take on g7, it's queen h7, king f6, queen h6, king e5, and now it's knight f3 with checkmate as the queen covers all the remaining squares of the black king. Well, this is a very nice line, was not calculated by Hans. He felt, okay, let's keep it simple. Just give a discover check with the bishop. You're attacking the queen. So king g8, bishop takes e7, rook takes, it's positioned with the queen versus two rooks, but the queen is on the attack. And after the move f6, white won the game because you're threatening to take the rook. If you play rook e6, there are various ways to, to continue. You can play a move like e5 according to the machine, but a human person like Hans would just calculate here the move queen g5 with the idea that after king f8, you give a check, you give another check on g8, the king has to go to the center, you take on f7, king d8, and you pick up the rook. I think that's the easiest line to calculate. And well, if you have time, if you have a luxury problem, you can also try to find another move like e5 with more attacking ideas to play knight g5, queen h7, and trying to give checkmate, not giving black the chance to win the pawn on f6. Anyway, this was just an absolutely insane Typical mating attack for these kind of Rue Lopez Italian type of structures. So I felt this was a very interesting game. Let me know what you think of it. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again. And see you soon with more coverage of Hans Niemann, his tournament in the London Chess Classic.